Okay, this morning in the dark, uh, it's around 10.30 in the morning, but we have deep clouds. Uh, we get almost no rain for three weeks, and then all of a sudden we get two inches of rain, and it looks like it's gonna rain for the next three or four days. Uh, fairly typical Texas weather, drought or flood. There's nothing in between. Okay, we're working an aquarium strain fish, uh, an aquarium strain uh, that I developed starting in 2008. People ask whether I ever use fish out of the sump. Well, there is a big male, dark blue body with a white dorsal. And I caught him. And I thought, now what am I going to do with him? I'd uh, like to replicate him. He's, he's big and kind of long. And, and so I, with my typical fantastic ability to name things, I called it a blue rocket, I guess because it was long. 2008, so it's a long time ago, so I don't really remember why I called it a blue rocket. But it's a big fish, uh, more torpedo shaped uh, than our blue peacocks, so I decided not to mate it to blue peacocks. Uh, I thought, now, it'd be nice to have color on females, so one of the uh, few uh, haplochromines in, in Lake Malawi that has uh, colorful uh, females is uh, Cirrocara morii, the blue dolphin, uh, and the females are, while they're not as pretty as, not as brightly colored as the males, they do have uh, blue bodies. So I gave him some uh, morii females, and I'm going, Susie's going to roll her eyes, the specific or species name for that fish is M-O-O-R-I-I. -I. In Latin, the, the when you have two I's together at the end of the word, the first one is pronounced uh, long E and the last one's pronounced long I. So it's Mori I. Uh, if there were only one I, it would be long E. Okay, so if it were spelled M O O. R I, it would be more E, but it's more E I because the two I's. Okay, uh, I've gotten down to looks like about eight males here. I want to look at one of them. I'm not going to use as a breeder because he shows a lot of uh, more E I color and a, and a hump, and I'm not selecting for hump in these fish. That that reminds me of something. A uh, a commenter about our dolphins said all you got to do is mate them to mori eyes and bingo you have uh, have humps that's not true every time i've done that cross you don't the f1 the first generation doesn't have humps you have to back cross in order to get it uh, anyway let's sort through these and pick uh, breeder males Definitely him. He's dark blue. He's got a white dorsal. Okay, fish, you, you cooperate a bit here. He's nice, and he shows a lot of mori eye. He's got a little bit of a hunt, but he doesn't have a white dorsal, so I'm not going to use him. Another one's showing quite a bit of mori eye, so he's got a little bit of a hump. He's got a white door, so he's not really dark enough for what I'm going for. So this guy's also shows some more eye coloration, but he's got a white door, so he's a little bit bluer. So I'm going to keep him. Too much like a more eye. So he's almost got a more eye hump and and more eye uh, coloration. Too pale and doesn't have a white dorsal. Pale, but he has a white dorsal. He has a little bit of a hump. I'm conflicted on that, and I'm going to look at him again. A little pale, but he's awfully young. But I may look at him again. Okay. All right. Let's look at these again. Yeah. 
He's got white dorsal. He's got a little bit of a hump, so I don't think so, because I'm not going for humps in this strain. Too pale and no white dorsal. Too pale, a little bit of white dorsal. But I, those are nice fish. It's just that they're not what I'm going for in this strain. No white dorsal, white dorsal. Okay, so let's look at these four again and, and pick breeders. A nice dark blue and a white dorsal. So he goes. That's a better yeah, yeah, let's. Yeah. You go with two. Okay, Susie says we go with two. So these are two breeders. Let's put them in the aquarium and look at them, and I'll get a flashlight to give us a little bit of lighting, uh, if I can find it. That doesn't really help, does it? No. Okay, well, we'll... So those are our two breeder males. Now I want to show you some females. Oops, it dropped him a little hard. Okay, these six males will be put up. I'm going to show you the females I'm not uh, that I'm selecting against in this strain. Now we didn't have a lot of choice last time because. Uh, we lost a lot of the fish. How many did this breeding colony produce? 455. 455 fish out of, uh, with, uh, uh, there's only around, let me look at the chart. There's about 25 females. Uh, I purged uh, uh, seven of them because they are too pale. They're going to throw those uh, light blue males that I'm selecting against. Uh, then let's look at these females. That female has some nice blue color and a white dorsal. She's definitely a breeder. This is what I typically go for, the dark brown a fish because they throw darker blue uh, male offspring. That's a good one. This one has a blue jaw. I'll go with her. This one has a lot of color. Put her in. This one has a fair amount of color, light body, but she's got some blue, which you probably can't see very well because of the lack of light today. Here's another one that has quite a bit of blue, a little bit of a hump, and she's light, but I'm going to use her anyway. And this is this is what I go for in females, this little, little one. Okay, so I'm going to add these to the breeding colony. They've already been counted. See, she's got quite a bit of color on her. Okay, so try to get the strain back to where it was, going for big males, which we don't really have big males right now because we lost our breeders uh, in the winter storm. But these will get bigger, going for a nice dark blue body with a white dorsal and a torpedo-shaped body. Uh, and we'll see how they do that. that we got a lot of production, so in a couple breeding cycles, when the little ones are big enough to uh, select breeders from, we should have some good fish to select from. Now, typically, you know, when you're trying to improve a strain, you end up with a lot of fish that you don't like, especially in a new strain. And they, they can be good fish, they're just not good, good fish of that strain. You end up with only 
one to maybe five percent of the fish that you want to keep but the next generation you're going to get a much higher percentage of fish that are good and each generation of selection uh, improves the fish uh, it's important to raise large numbers when you're doing this so that you get that one or two fish that's really superior and is going to shift the gene pool towards what you want. Good fish keeping.